on Saturday, I went to go see um, Nina Kravitz play at um, the Wolverstone Assembly Hall as part of a night called Retextured, um, which was hosted by Crank Brother, which was really, really, really awesome. Um, uh, I went to it because of... Um, <laughs> What was I going to? Well, let me get the review up here. I went to it because um, I listened to an interview with the Crank Brother guys at um, or, on Resident Advisor, and it was a great interview, like super, super amazing interview, um, where the Crank Brother dudes kind of spoke about their come up and about how they used to promote parties and about the next chapter. And it's a really, you know, eye opening interview in terms of like what they had been doing in their career co- um, going forward. And it really kind of inspired me, obviously, with the things that I'm doing now in terms of DJing. <laughs> and kind of, you know, we call it club, but yeah, we call it club promoting. And the stuff that I'm kind of doing at the moment, it really kind of inspired me. And I kind of was like, oh, wow, this was cool. And then they spoke about the festivals that they're doing, and they're doing this festival called Retextures and a few others. And I saw it, I was like, oh, wow, Nina Kravitz playing in Wolverstow. That's such a weird and rare occasion, right? Nina Kravitz is one of the DJs that I'm kind of a real big fan of. I just love the way she plays. Um, she kind of had a bit of, you know, a little bit of controversy early, not early on, but you know, in the middle part of her career, due to the whole um, Resident Advisor um, um, interview piece that she done, where she was, you know, in the bath with bubbles and shit, and I think a few DJs such as Maceo Plex and stuff kind of, you know, felt a bit untowards about it, um, because she was kind of the one that was kind of being propped up as the next big star, and a lot of the people in the scene kind of felt it was, you know, her kind of sexually exploiting herself in order to kind of gain new ground and to kind of, you know, get further ahead. Which you know to some point might be true, but by and large, she is a very good DJ. Anyway, skill with when it comes to just the skill of DJing, she's one of the best out there. So um, I saw that listed up there. I was like, oh my god, it's in Wolverstow. It's not too far from where I live. Um, and I decided to buy a ticket and go. And of course, buying a ticket on Resident Advisor is super easy, pretty simple process. I think it cost me like twenty five quid, um, which again a lot more expensive, a lot uh, uh, more expensive than it would be to go to Bergheim or Panorama Bar. But you know, we don't live in Berlin. The cost of living here is much much more expensive than it was in Berlin, so you can't complain about that. Uh, bought a ticket on Resident Advisor, added the ticket to my wallet with a QR code, and then kind of spent most of the Friday list, listening to um, other bits of techno, not her techno, other bits of techno, um, um, DJing a bit, just kind of get me in the mood, and I got a bus, um, a, tw- a 69 all the way up there, 50, 40, 30 minutes, um, and then I arrived, and I had a midterm so assembly before, and it's just like an amazing... Um, building court with an amazing courtyard on the front and it was just weird to kind of walk up to this place that looked like i don't know uh, it looked like a theater and to see loads of people dressed in black you know obvious kind of like you know um techno fans and electronic music fans heading to this weird kind of theater place and at the front of you come in it had kind of all the barriers set up and massive kind of pillars and people with um uh, card readers and scanning so they can scan you in with your ticket you walk in, you get patted down. The search was a bit aggressive, don't get me wrong. Um, um, if there's one thing I could say about the night, I'd say there was probably, the, the security was heavy-handed as fuck. There was security everywhere, like everywhere. It was like, like, again, maybe it's because I haven't been to one of these things in a long time, like um, these sort of nights in, in a bigger space. Because I think if I, what's the last one I went to? Yeah, I went to see... Dr. Rubenstein and Roy Pires at Mixed Garage, right, which is a smaller venue and they kind of run it in a smaller way too, right, they run it in a kind of like a, in a club night way um, I'm not sure the capacity is there actually it's quite a big venue, might be 500 capacity maybe 500, but it's a smaller space right, it feels a bit smaller, they run it like a little club night, it's in Hackney Wick, right so they usually have, you know, a couple of security guards outside you know, to kind of, you know, um, make sure the line goes smoothly and then they have maybe a couple inside roaming around, and that's basically it, right? And then maybe one station outside in the smoking area. But this one, I, re- I, this, I rechecked it. They had the security guards outside. They had security guards inside patting you down. They had another security guard at the door. They had security guards um, on the sides of the re- of the room. They had somebody like uh, um, a kind of cleaning person going around picking up cups out on the floor with a bag, like just going around constantly picking up bag uh, cups, right? Um, which I didn't think was needed, right? They could have just easily just, you know, did that at the end and kind of sweeten them all up. But I guess maybe um, they knew my, they, they they probably knew better than I do. Uh, they probably know better than I do why they did why they did that. And then they had police. I mean, sorry, security guard police coming up and down the stairs, going outside the smoking room. They had police. They had security guards, sorry, coming in and out the the bathrooms every four minutes. 
it just felt a little bit heavy handed, right? It just got, it just kind of put you out of the vibe. And again, I think with electronic music, especially with stuff like that, you want it to be immersive. You want to forget about your surroundings, but you constantly get reminded of your surroundings when some guy in a fluorescent jacket or some big dude with like a massive yellow badge on the side of it thing is coming around, right? It just makes it, it just kind of puts you out of the mood. And again, can't complain. I guess this is the, this is the kind of landscape that we're in. We're in London. I'm not going to keep fetishizing in uh, Berlin when I don't live there. But, you know, that experience of being in Berlin and having that kind of freedom and being able to kind of, and even other club nights I've been to in London where you don't really feel like you, you're being watched all the time. It kind of feels a bit, you know, you kind of lose yourself in a dance a bit more. But again, I didn't think too much of it. Kind of put myself down. I was like, no, I'm going to concentrate. I'm going to have a good time. Went to the bar, got myself a whiskey and a drink. And then decided just to kind of go and pick a spot somewhere where I could just dance and have a good time and fucking freak out. Because, you know, I paid 25 quid for this thing. I got that at 12. I went to see it. Went to dance all the way into a through in the night until for, for a whole set. So I just picked a corner towards the side of the room, maybe towards the left, uh, her left, right? Um, And the setup was amazing. Just like a big black box that she was DJing on. You couldn't even see the, the, the decks. And it was a, ma- a massive kind of um, edge-to-edge projection on the back of her, uh, behind her. Uh, lighting towards the side of it. And the projection was basically, the lighting was kind of cut out. You couldn't, the lighting wasn't on her. You couldn't see her exactly. You just saw a silhouette of her on be- uh, um, uh, in front of the screen. So that when she was dancing and moving, you just saw her hands flailing around in the kind of Nina Kravitz way. So it's fu- it, it looked fucking awesome. I think I might have a picture of it here and there's kind of thread here. See if they got it. No, the this is basically her dancing, but you couldn't really see. So that's basically her dancing in a, in a Warsaw Assembly and then just scores of people just shocking out. And again, I think security, so secu- heavy-handed security aside, I think the one thing that was amazing was that the bar was, you know, awesome the bartenders were great they had two bars on e- either side at the end of the room and they were they were just serving drinks super quickly they weren't, weren't hanging around i think that was awesome the bartenders were great so shout out to the bartenders they hooked it up um one thing that was fucking cool was the people that were there that was a fucking good crowd man they were really up for it they were dancing all night long like no one stopped dancing everyone was just fucking shocking out throwing shapes having a good time i loved it i loved it loved it loved it i love seeing so many people dance like that that was a really um good experience to see and really something that really kind of brought me a lot of joy in that respect so i like seeing people dance have a good time so that was awesome um and yeah i had an amazing time man you know again i think i mentioned somebody else i went to a bar the next day I think, like seeing Dr. Roy Perez and Dr. Rubenstein, and like um, the same way when I went to go, um, when I went to the, uh, Bergheim, I saw DJ Harvey play in the main room, or in Bergheim, um, like when I went to go see Mo- see Drum on somewhere like so Wire. It's really important, I think, for a DJ or somebody that's into electronic music to go out and see these people live, especially the top tier, especially the A, the A, the 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 A class, right? The the the, the top of the top of the DJs out there. I think it's really important to go out and see them. I think sometimes you can get a little bit, um, we're a bit spoiled in the fact that we get to see a lot of the DJs play on the internet, whether it's through your boiler room, uh, whether it's via any other fucking streaming website that puts them online, right? Whether it's through SoundCloud mixes, we get to, we get to see and hear a lot of them online. So we don't really feel like we should be going to go see them play live. But I think you should. Because there's something about seeing these people play live, DJing especially, especially because I'm a DJ and I think I'm good, right? Seeing somebody like the Kanina Kravitz um, start and end a DJ set, right? Four hours of techno just kind of like taking you up, down, up, down, up, down. And I think I mentioned somebody um, the other day that whenever I felt like I was getting tired, it, it seemed like she was also... Lily Carey was was also kind of taking it down a notch and then when I started to feel a little bit like I could go again all of a sudden the music was was cranking up one more time it wasn't a coincidence it didn't feel like it was a coincidence to me it felt like she knew what she was doing that she was reading a crowd without reading a crowd right and there's a really good Jeff Mills interview that's out now (coughs) advisor (coughs) where he says something along the lines of like you know he's been doing it so long he doesn't even look at a crowd anymore because he can't usually when he's on stage he can't even see anybody because it's so dark right um, but he can, you can kind of feel it in your bones, right? Where people are want wanting to go, and I guess with her, there's the same thing too. We need a kind of like she can just feel it, I guess, for the most part, or maybe because she's a dancer, she can actually look at people and see what they're doing. But that was just incredible to see it, to hear, to witness just how effortlessly she was just taking us left, right, up, down, across. It was just 
it was honestly it was like awe inspiring how good she was and it just really motivated me and got me to DJing again like, so much so when I came back home I just I did like a quick mix I was so inspired it was just it was fucking awesome like honestly seeing somebody of her stature play live it's like wow I get it I get it I was happy again I saw her in a kind of you know an enclosed environment because you know there was a I'm got, I forgot where I'm gonna. Is it? It, was, it might not be Junction Two, but something else I wanted to go to, which again is another Crank Brother promotion. Crank Brother smashed it, by the way. You, th- those guys, big up to them too. I went to a few of their Shoreditch Street part, Shoreditch Street parties back in the day, and um, who would have thought they've kind of come? Look how far they've come from promoting in clubs to doing what they're doing now. It's just a really, really amazing thing, and they, you know, they run a very lean operation. I think this is something long as they've only got three full time staff, so it's, uh, two brothers and one other person. Everyone else kind of freelancers and helps them out where it need be. So yeah, like I said, like just really cool dudes who are really doing it the right way. Um, but again, like it's just just all inspiring, absolutely all inspiring. I recommend you check out. There's probably videos online of of her performing and stuff, which I'll actually let me try to see if I can find them. Uh, but again, a really cool environment, really play, cool place to go to. Um, it ended exactly on at four. She kind of wound it down with an amazing you know, classic Nina Kravitz kind of um, ending tune really kind of took it down and not slowed it down and then it was just like rapturous applause when she finished like people clapping and hooting and hollering um really amazing atmosphere to see her play like um again that's the kind of promotion that you want when you book a Nina Kravitz you don't want to see her play for I don't know two hours in the nightclub somewhere you want you want something a promoter to really risk it all and again I'm not sure how much money they made on it if any but you want a a promoter to really risk it all and kind of um, uh, put them in a space where they can kind of really work and really make the best of themselves. And I think that's basically what we got there. Let me see if I can find a video of it on YouTube. Maybe someone uploaded it. Uh, another kind of thing that I was a, not, a little bit annoyed by, the people that were up, the amount of people that are recording um, was a little bit annoying. That was a little bit annoying. It's like, you're watching Nina Kravitz in Wolverhampton, man. Put your phone down and enjoy it. That was a that was a thing that kind of pissed me off a little bit. Um, there were so many cameras out. I think it got it got better towards the end. People stopped kind of putting their phones out and stuff. But I think for the most part, people were recording because they wanted to steal her songs. I think for the most part, people are doing song ID checks. I think so because I know that's what I used to do when I first got into techno. <clears throat> One of the things I used to do religiously was, you know, um, every weekend I'd kind of search Ricardo Villalobos. I'd go on YouTube, I'd search upload date, and I'd just kind of look for um, videos that people have had uploaded of Ricardo Villalobos playing out somewhere. And that's kind of what I used to do religiously all the fucking time. And you'd get loads of gems that way, right? Someone would upload a video of like, Ricardo Villalobos playing in some far-flung place somewhere. You play this amazing house track that you can go and then play for your friends and pretend that you found it. <laughs> um, so I guess I used to do it too, but... It was just annoying to see how many people had their phones out. I was like, come on, dudes. Like, put your phone down. But again, you know, I guess it's not my business to tell you what to do with their phones and stuff. But that was the only slight thing that kind of rubbed me up the wrong way. Um, but like I said, by and large, an incredible, incredible, incredible night. Let me see if I can find it on here. Maybe someone looking on Instagram. I just want to see if someone's got a video of it. Just to kind of see what it looked and remind me. But again, like I said, um, I'm easy to go back home from again. Um, another even shorter bus journey home because there wasn't any traffic i um, got the bus back and then kind of you know chilled out for the most part but yes seeing in the Kravitz play live was just fucking incredible um a really a real real pleasure and a real treat um for those of us that live in this part of east london that aren't necessarily um you know uh don't necessarily get the club nights that we should be getting in, in and around here um but again a really really good evening let me see if i can find a video of it so i must have a video of her Oh, you know what? Actually, was cool. Nina Kravitz's crew. Uh, because I didn't see them because I was obviously standing towards the back dancing, having a good time. But when I went to the smoking there and I came back in, um, some of her crew were standing to the side of the of the stage. They looked fucking cool, man. Like, they looked awesome. They looked fucking awesome. Like, think of what Nina Kravitz's crew looked like. Loads of, like, kind of... Uh, what do you, would you call it? Cyber goths? I don't know. But people just dressed amazing. Like, kind of people that would hang around with Demna at Balenciaga and Vetamon kind of crew. You know what I mean? Those kind of people. They really kind of... They looked amazing. Uh, so, yeah. So, it's so, a so, so big up Nina Kravitz's crew. They looked fucking cool. Let me see if I can find a video of it. Someone must have a video of it. No, nothing, 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 nothing. Oh. So all these videos that were being taken in the club, right? And no one's uploading a video of Nina Kravitz playing a Wolverstone Assembly. That is very, very peculiar. Or maybe I'm missing something here. Yeah, no videos. No one's got any videos. Even on Instagram, I've just typed in... Um, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, no one's got anything. 
Okay, that's really strange. Considering the amount of phones that are out there. I didn't I, I took a couple pictures of my film camera, but I didn't take my phone out once. Uh let me see if I can find something via Crank Brothers. Let's see if they got anything on there. Uh, but again, like I said, they fucking smashed it, Crank Brothers. They did a really good job, and I'm really happy for them and, and all their successes, man. Um, I really recommend you check them out. Um, but yeah, um, yeah, okay, cool. Doesn't doesn't exist, but it doesn't matter. Um, I was there. I had a good time. I loved it. It was a great occasion. And again, I recommend you. I recommend if you're a DJ fan or you like electronic music and you are on the fence about seeing some of these guys play live, I really highly recommend you go and do it because there is something really amazing about seeing these dudes and these girls laying it down in a room um, for four plus hours and really bring it. It really makes you think like, okay, this is why these guys get paid the big bucks. Like they are top, 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 top tier DJs. And there's no real mistake in that for the most part. But yeah, that was that, that was my 